Hello there, and welcome to Fixing the Sequel Trilogy, the writer's room podcast dedicated to fixing the Star Wars sequels. I'm Bryce Quinn, and I'm joined by born-again Star Wars fanboy, Cole Forfang fan. Cole, tell us how Ahsoka has changed your life. I am born again. I'm a born again <laughs> Christian, I believe. Uh, I'm actually really enjoying Ahsoka. Um, it's the first show that you've actually been keen on watching since, like, well, like yeah. Mando. You weren't really, like, actually, keeping that is, up with it. Um, initially, I kind of, like, was a bit skeptical about the show when the first few episodes came out. It wasn't, like, bad enough to be, like, ah, oh, I'm out. But things like the pacing and a few moments kind of threw me off. Episode three really picked up, in my opinion. I've really enjoyed it, and I'm keen to see where they go. And hopefully they don't fuck up Thrawn. Yeah. So. Well, that was Cole's unexpected Ahsoka review yeah, in progress. Review. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good, though, because yeah. he doesn't get to be on, you know, the weekly yeah, yeah, episodes. Yeah, this yeah. Is this is true. Tune in to the comments of the videos I post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I love your comments. Yeah. <laughs> I am also you joined... I'm also joined by consummate professional Carmelo Keating. How are you, Melo? Good. Define consummate. Consummate professional is a term used for people who are very professional and very good at what they do. This is in reference to what you did over the weekend working as a unit oh. manager on a project we can't talk about. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I lived mate. with you and I just saw like all of like the unit managing stuff that you had like littering our lounge room area and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give Melo a compliment. Oh, no, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um yeah, everyone was was pretty happy. Unit managing is is like uh like snacks and drinks and waters and rubbish and literally and if you're good at your job, everyone's favorite person. If you're bad at your job, everyone's least favorite person. Yes, and yeah. I did hear you're my favorite person a few times. Hell so yeah. pretty happy with that. That's exactly what you want when you're unit managing. Anyways, yeah. so that was my little thing for you, Mello. And Excuse then me. we're going to get right into the show. That's right. This is Fixing the Sequel Trilogy. And every week we take on a different piece of the Star Wars galaxy in our journey to rewriting the sequel trilogy. Today, our massive Sauron eyeball shifts to the very topical New Republic, featured more in the Mandalorian and Ahsoka show than in the entire sequel trilogy. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting little note to start off with as a teaser. Just for a quick context, after the end of the Galactic Civil War, the rebellion to restore the Republic did just that, creating the New Republic from the bones of the massive Galactic Empire. And that's where we want to start our story, at the end of Return of the Jedi, not the way that they do it in the sequels. So I think what I wanted to start with is a pretty big criticism of that one shot that we get from The Force Awakens specifically. Yep. As we see the, the New Republic getting destroyed. Yes. In, <laughs> that's the only yep. shot we yep. see of the, okay, yeah. the, the, the civilization. Literally. Basically. We're there on Hosnian Prime. The first time we see that fucking planet. First yeah. time we're introduced to it. And yeah, there's a whole group of people out on a balcony watching as a laser beam comes towards them and then they explode and that's it. And, that's, and not just that planet, it's the entire yeah. system of planets. Yeah. So any kind of idea of having a core worlds or like that system of democracy and civilization is just gone in a blink of an eye mm. yeah and then from that point on we don't know who the characters are or what they're working towards no and i think that's like one of the many key flaws of the force awakens and what that does to the rest of the the, the sequel trilogy yeah. Yeah. um and then what do you do from there because it's just a small band of fighters fighting against a seemingly pretty small like obviously it's a big military but they don't have they're not the galactic empire they're no. still just a military no. and force. then we're literally just told you jump into the last jedi we're told in that opening crawl that now the uh the first order uh reigns supreme in the galaxy yeah and, and yeah. When, when you know that film picks up overnight from the previous one it's like like what what are the well, that stakes was fucking quick what is yeah, the like... world what in what on earth is happening yeah here? none of it yeah. makes sense and it leaves you feeling very empty yeah. now force awakens could have had marginally, marginally more set up for that scene. There's a mm. character you'll see, a, a woman you'll see where, where the uh, Hosnian Prime is being blown up. You, you're focusing on her face. There's a reason, because we do set that character up in a deleted scene earlier. It was meant mm. to be Leia's first scene. Yeah. I think that character's name is, is Corsella. I think she's in one of the books. And she was sent, she's kind of like Leia's representative, the Resistance's yeah. representative to the New Republic, even though the New Republic doesn't like the Resistance. They don't like Leia anymore because of the aftermath of that book, Bloodline. Mm. Yeah. All of that stuff. There could have been slightly more set up, but it still doesn't explain anything to do with the New Republic. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so we're on this criticism of that one shot and then what that means for the overall trilogy. Cole, do you have any notes to jump in there? I do think it's just crazy, the fact that there's almost no presence to the New Republic at all in yeah. the sequels. Like, because the, that, the whole thing about that there is you kind of lose any sense of actual stakes to the story because there's no context for what Who people are, are fighting the for. people? Yep. What is exactly. the world if it is not the people of the New Republic? Exactly. Yeah. And, like, that's the thing with the whole um, destruction of Hosnian Prime, you know. You don't see anything about that world, anything about the people who die. You have no emotional stake in it besides Leia is sad. Yes. Yeah. And when you get to the end of Rise of Skywalker, it's like, there's more of us, Poe. There's more of us. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Yeah. Who in the fucking galaxy yeah. is coming to yeah. help you? That, that same criticism can possibly be leveled against 
a new hope because you don't see civilizations. You don't see anyone outside yes, of like the but, Tatooine people. Yeah, but that's the thing. You do see the oppression against the people at, in Tatooine, the everyday. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and people can try and make the argument that we never saw Alderaan. Why should we care about it being blown up? Because Alderaan is Leia. Yeah. We have a character that, and it's not like, you know, Hosnian Prime is is Leia in, in, in the sequels. It's like Alderaan is Leia in the original. You're not, it's we not, we're not her. caring about the planet being lost. We're caring about how it affects mm. this one character. Yeah. She just lost her family and yeah. her world. And, and her it's also not like uh, Alderaan is, you know, the head of the government. Yeah, you know exactly. You know, like it doesn't represent all of civilization. It represents, you know, if you dig into the lore a bit more, it's a very, I guess, progressive, left-leaning, if you want to say, kind of political faction and planet, and like in a in a larger galaxy, in a in a larger part of a civilization. Yeah, right? and it's it's sort of sort of like you know setting up the fact that you know, oh, the Death Star really is a threat. We have to yeah. stop this thing before it kills more planets. It's yes, an example of that. Yeah, and I think also as well because Episode Four is you know the introduction of everything in star wars yeah. it's also the first time you actually see how truly and on what scope of evil the empire is yeah to, to destroy an, an entire planet and then quick thing again it's like you know because the sequels so much of their problem is is that they're afraid of doing anything the prequels did and they just want to do what the originals mm. did and they took that as again talking about no Let's politics literally destroy politics yeah but even in a new hope there is a conversation in a, in a bloody imperial yes. boardroom meeting, yeah. uh, like an AGM. That's the politics um, in that. Yeah, yeah. In they the talk about yeah. the fact that the Senate has been disbanded. And yeah. yeah, Of course, we get that set up later down the line with the prequels, mm. but, you know, they still, they talk about it. It's enough. Yeah. It's, it's involved enough for it to have an effect and have some kind of bearing on the story and yeah. give you a sense of what is happening. They say offhandedly, we dismantled the last remaining idea of democracy. Yeah. It's and, a full mm. authoritarian And thing. now like, we're, like, cool, yeah, holy we shit. are now the ultimate power in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you, you get those lines and stuff. And then Empire Strikes Back, you see Bespin, which is like a, kind of a representation of some kind of culture and society that exists sort of outside of the Galactic Empire. They're yeah, like, it's like we, it's... we're on our own here. We do our own thing. Yep. Cool. This is how we yeah. like it. It's like a mining city, you yeah. know, off in space. Yeah. Mm. We don't see any big cities or like any big inner like core world kind of cities. Yeah. Stuff. We don't really see any of that. And it would have been cool too. But at the same time, where does that fit in the yeah. story? Yep. And it still feels like a real place. Yeah. You know, you go to Bespin and that helps it kind of feel like a real mm. lived-in place. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose that's like the problem with the sequels, you know. it's Because in the original trilogy, you know, you get all these locations because it allows you to see how the Empire and how just the great civil war is actually affecting everyday people. Yeah. And in the context of the sequels, you just don't have anything honestly comparable to Bespin. Make an argument, Canto Bite, maybe. But yeah, I just I feel like that's something really missing. Yeah, so actually, you know what? I feel like Canto Byatt is a good example of like, okay, here's where some high society people live. Mm. Yeah. It's not necessarily in the core world, but it is like some high society kind of people yeah, and what they do, how they spend their time, how they're involved mm. in the rest of the story. Space Las Vegas. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's honestly, that whole premise and that setting has a lot of promise and it had yeah. a lot of potential and it was kind of honestly wasted and everyone hates Canto Byatt because mm. know, the, yeah. the cringy dialogue and the cringy action set piece. Yeah. Mm. Um, and but also, there is potential there. Yeah. It's also the fact that it's like, so with, with Bespin, we had a core character in Lando tying us to that place. Are we expected to believe that DJ uh, is the DJ, character that ties us to Canto Bight? He's supposed to be the character that ties us to Canto Bight, but he Ken doesn't Breaker. represent that location. Not at all. So that's the missed It the would mark, have been though. much better to have the guy who did have the, the red palm bloom yeah, there and have yeah. him be a piece of shit who does play both sides and is rich and is yeah. a very good gambler and yeah. is also a, a good yeah. code cracker. For they some wasted reason. a lot of screen time with that misdirect. That, no yeah. that entire misdirect was just solely for Ryan Johnson to, and this is true, to say fuck you to the fans because that was a part of what he was trying to get across in the story and in the, and the ideas in the themes yeah. was like mm. the fans are sometimes the problem. Like your ideas of what Star Wars is can also be the problem. Mm. See why he did that, but it's also, <laughs> it just, it didn't well, hit. It's an unpopular yeah. choice and there's a reason. That there's a reason well, it was uh, unpopular. Didn't uh, we as a collective fandom kind of vindicate him? <laughs> Did we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, we proved uh, him right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, here's our opinion. A lot of the Star Wars community is yeah. not good. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, they bully people off of Twitter, yeah. um, and they say horrible things, very racist, misogynistic, yeah, horrible yeah. things, yeah. Uh, um, very loudly. Yeah. Well, sometimes I feel like Ryan doesn't help it. No, but, um, I, I was looking at some tweets the other day of him just, like, <laughs> arguing with fans in this super douchey way. And it's like, yeah. you're not helping. You're not Who's being a positive time? voice here. Who's got the time for that? Yeah, it's a lot of effort. Okay, right let's talk about the New Republic. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah, we got off topic a little bit there. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, um, this is a weird episode because we're, we're, we're just going to sidestep the prequels, I guess, from here on in. Yeah. Let's go to Ahsoka. Yes, so and that's the Mandalorian. My, mm. my next few notes is basically we get that one shot in the sequels. So everything that they're doing in Mando Season 2 and 3 and in Ahsoka 
is in a way building up to that destruction. If yeah. they're going to keep it all canon, if they're not going to change any of the timeline yeah. stuff, it's, it doesn't seem like they're planning on doing no, it. No, they're doing that sort of like the thing that Clone Wars did for the prequels of, you know, filling Trying in, to bridge the gap. Yeah, filling in, in the gaps in a, in a good way. And I suppose like... The, I think they're doing quite a good job now to actually show us the New Republic and, and you know, yeah. mm. what sort of role they had in the galaxy in the few years post yeah. Return of the Jedi. I don't know. Where do we start? We've yeah. talked about, let's talk about some of the positives because we've talked about how a lot of what it seems like Filoni is trying to do with the overall storytelling, the world building, is very similar to some of the ideas we've tossed around on this show. Where, it one, it's going to be incredibly difficult to build the New Republic out of the ashes of the Empire. Yep. That should just be a hard thing. Yep. Two, you need resources, human resources, yeah. and also robot resources. But yep. we see that in Ahsoka Episode 3. Spoilers for Ahsoka Episode 3, by the way. Big spoilers. Big spoiler warning if you haven't seen it th last week's episode. They have this entire factory on Corellia dedicated to um, building ships and stuff and scrapping old Star Destroyers. Episode 2. Episode two? Yeah. yeah. You're right. It That's was right. episode anyway. two. Yeah, big, yeah, scrapping Star Destroyers and stuff like that. And all of the people working there are ex-Imperial. Because yeah. that's how that works. It yeah. has to be. Because yeah. there's no yes. people who I aren't love... Imperial yeah. if they control the entire yes. galaxy. But yeah, they I literally... That arc. That's yeah. very good. That you know that is how that works. That's 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 how that worked in the real world. Yeah, we're going to talk about a lot of real world ties, and this is the start of the part of the problem with what they're doing now is because they're actually not taking enough from the real world. Okay, because they say in that episode, I think when Hera is is talking to someone, yeah, no, they're all ex imperial, but they're all loyal to the New Republic. Mm. Has anyone checked up on that? Yeah, they say yeah. something along those lines, and it's like, okay, 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 okay. Post World War Two, Germany and Japan were both occupied by the Allies, by the Americans, by the British, by, you know, French in the case of uh, Germany, for years. Yeah. For a long time, because it takes a long time mm. to remove those those sentiments that were built. Yeah. You know, yeah. those, those pro-Japanese sentiments, pro-German sentiments uh, in the time of World War II. You don't just say, hey, you're on our side now. We'll pay you to make stuff for us now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not money talks, it's military occupation talks. Yeah. Mm. You know, and it's brutal, but that's how it was done. Okay. Yeah. So you think they should kind of lean more into that side of things? I think that... Even it, though it seems as though the New Republic is trying to be better than the Empire. Yeah, yeah you know, but it, well, it's, not, it's not like full military occupation. It's it, it, That had a whole demilitarized stance, but it was just like, like you know... We're just standing around in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't step out of line because we are here. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 I think, though, in the context of, like, that storyline in episode two, it's a lot of people who weren't, at least from what I remember, it's a lot of people who weren't, like, imperial officers, perchance, but more of, like, just low-level sort of workers within government, civil servants yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And although, like, I kind of have mixed opinions on how devoutly they are yeah. like, for the Empire, for the along Empire, with the yeah. Empire and stuff, I thought that was kind of silly. Um, mm. But although I get the point, and that's yeah. the story, guys. I feel like in cases of people like that in roles in governments, they would just be transitioned. Um, and I could see how there would be like a more subtle, like sympathetic agenda beneath them. In the context of say like heavily imperial worlds and stuff like that though, I could see military yeah. occupation like yeah. Coruscant. Okay, so yeah, no, let's look at some, something quickly like Coruscant in Andor, yeah. right? Okay, so we see regular people working on Coruscant in Imperial mm. jobs there. What's what's the guy's name? The guy who's... Cyril. Cyril, right. Yeah. So yeah. not Cyril. Let's think about one of Cyril's co-workers or like, you know, the, his, his new boss he gets mm. at the office job. Do you think that guy is gives a empire? shit about yeah. the Empire? No. Yeah. No, he gets paid by them. That's nice. He has job security. Mm. Yeah. But let's say then the New Republic, boom, tomorrow takes over. They also so, offer yeah. him job security? Cool, good. He's got job security. He doesn't care about the cause, mm. you know? I think one of the truly evil things about the Nazis, right, is the fact that so many of the people who committed atrocities were kind of just using the Nazis as a means to an end, right? Oh, like, yeah. So, like, like Nazi yeah, scientists. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, yeah. that's um, one of the interesting things about the Nuremberg trial, uh, trials is at the time, a lot of people were expecting, like, these cartoonishly evil officers to come through. And then they found out that some of the architects of the Holocaust were just these civil servants, bureaucrats who kind of just saw and treated people as numbers. And when you look at Operation Paperclip and all that, you know, there were so many people behind atrocities with the Nazis who were only involved in it, like Werner von Braun, because they saw it as a means to an end. So Werner von Braun, you know, created the V2 rocket, allowed the Nazis to create so much devastation. And then he was transitioned over to the United States where he basically pioneered um, the space race. Yeah. yeah. And to apply that to the context of Star Wars, I think that something they should explore more is characters who are kind of like evil in this neutral sense where they're, they're just not, in it for themselves. Yeah, they want to do what they do. They yeah. don't care who gives them Yeah, the they're money. not ideologically evil. They're pragmatically evil. 
and how would those characters fit into the context of New Republic government? Yeah. That's a very cool space to explore, like for yeah. character work and it stuff. Because you don't really see that with um, that one guy. I can't remember his name, but he's the kind of sniveling dude yeah. in yeah. Ahsoka episode yeah. two. He's like, oh, we're in it for the bottom line. So yeah. His, yeah. his interest is yeah. money. But it'd be more interesting if his interest was specifically like, I want to make cool stuff yeah. that's used for war. You well, know, something yeah, like that. It's funny because um, I know, Bryce, I know you hate this episode. The closest thing we get to that is Mando season three. Okay. Episode three. Okay. The the the, uh, the cloning scientist. The doctor. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's true. Yeah. I do hate that episode more because of how it shows us Coruscant and their version of Operation Paperclip mm. and how they are integrating yeah. old yeah. like Imperial officers and stuff. But I love that character and yeah. I thought that character had a mm. lot of potential. But, you know, he, he, he just wanted that, though, didn't he? He wanted to continue his research, but the New Republic had outlawed the cloning research. There would be a lot of characters who would have worked with the Empire because, you know, there were things that they could do. And it would be interesting to see, well, I guess as a sort of side tangent to explain the motivation why the New Republic would do it, I was looking into why Operation Paperclip actually happened. It had a lot to do with the Cold War. It was the fact that, well, if us, the United States, don't go out and just take these Nazi officials then the Russians are going to get them, yeah. which they yeah. were doing. Yeah. So there was this rush to go and basically do a draft and like pick um, all these scientists and stuff like that and yeah. other officials. And thinking about that, in the case of Star Wars, what would be that What's pressure? the competition? Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's a which good point. Tra- this, is, this is the exact train of thought I wanted to okay. delve into yeah. today. Brilliant. Yeah. What's okay. your thought here? This is basically my solution to the, how do we do this sort of like New Republic taking over or the Imperial stuff is like that we just- The power vacuum. Yeah. Let's take it straight from the real world. Okay. Let's just mm. use all the What examples. inspiration do you okay. have in mind? Places were occupied, you know? Germany yeah. was occupied. Uh, Japan was occupied. But then, you know, unlike in Star Wars, yeah, it was divided. Europe was divided. Mm. With this Eastern and Western bloc. So I thought, okay- the re- rebellion had to do some sketchy stuff in their time to okay. get shit done, and we know that they had to work with people like Saw Gerrera. Yeah, more mm. of these, you know, these people who still want to fight, but they're willing to do it at any. They're extremists, yeah. And so I thought, okay, we're talking a lot about the criminal world, criminal underworld in in our in our being some sort of threat in our uh, trilogy. So what if it's like, okay, in certain cases, in certain areas of the galaxy where, like, you know, the Hut Clan has power and other uh, criminal empires have power that the rebellion did have to work with them to right. try and, you know, take down the empire in certain in certain regions. And so what if there are areas of space that are now kind of like subdivided? So like part of the deal they made was like, hey, you help yeah, us well, out. And then yeah, when we take over, I... you keep your territory. Yeah, it's morally fucked. And maybe the New Republic weren't actually going to hold up their end of that deal because they don't actually like the crime underworld. Yeah. And they were maybe using them as a means to an end. Right. But mm. that's gone awry. But now because of these deals and because of that relationship, this these out of crime... Uh, factions are like, no, we want this territory. We're keeping it. Yeah. And in order to keep it, we're going to bring on ex-imperials as scientists, as engineers, as officers. Yeah. Mm. And we're going to use them to build bigger and more te- deadly stuff. Yeah. And then the New Republic sees this and they're like, oh shit, we've yeah. got to do the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. And we've already spoken about like, you know, okay, we'll do the thing where Nazi high ups uh, tried to flee to Argentina. Uh, yeah. Same deal would have like, you know, imp- ex-imperial warlords in, in, yeah. this, in wild space and stuff like that. I really fuck with that idea. Mm. That's yeah. fantastic. That's, um, I love that idea, especially like the implementation of the criminal underworld. And then you get sort of like a um, Cold War analog as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, oh, yeah, you go ahead. Oh, sorry. I had this brief, crazy thought, right? <laughs> okay. That what if this had been in the works for a while? What if the new, like during the time of the original trilogy, they'd always been working with them? And I thought, what if in secret, because they were afraid of things getting out, yeah. the rebellion, went, went, since they were feeling like so close to winning what if like some deal with jabba had gone awry and that's kind of also part of the reason that leia killed him oh <laughs> <laughs> so like retroactively making it like an actual like a, that a there hit, was like there was that there was actually more motivation behind it that's no, really that's interesting so wild <laughs> it is a bit wild but i thought ooh, because we, we want to we want to you know look at leia need uh, uh, like as a character who has more room for evolution in yeah episode absolutely seven so dark that's shit really like that from the past. That's a wild it's ass just something. That's a wild ass pitch. I like I, that. I like that. Um, Cole, you had a thought there. Yeah. So, um, so I, I want to sort of build on the idea of like uh, that Operation Paperclip and all that. Yeah. One of the ideas I was operating with for a while is you have immediately post-war, right, This these basically Nuremberg trials for Imperial officers uh, because now that the war's won, a lot of people want justice, especially in the rebellion's higher up statuses. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the people who, like, aligned with the Rebellion and, and hated the, yes. the Empire. Yeah, the very diehard rebel yeah. supporters. So they stage these trials, which are, um, a lot of people don't... Like, a lot of Imperial sympathizers hate it because they say it's a kangaroo court. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, 
it's this execution of some horrendous imperial offices. Now the problem, or well, that not the problem, but the consequence of that is you then get a lot of former imperials who would have turned themselves in being like, nope, I'm not yeah, turning yeah, myself yeah. in yep. because I'm going to get executed. Mm -hmm. right. So they start fleeing to uh, where the remnants are in like the outskirts of the galaxies yep. and all that. And they start to build this um, yeah. movement with imperial remnants. So because of that pressure now with this growing movement of warlords and all that, Mon Mothma or some other high up in the New Republic realize, well, we kind of have to stop their momentum. And because of that, they initiate this Operation Paperclip. And they start yeah. treating them a lot nicer. Because yeah. they, in order to okay. stop them yeah. getting, like, fleeing out and becoming their own thing in the yeah, Outer yeah. Rim, they want to, like, yeah. stay here, we, don't be a part of the the Empire Remnant kind of thing. If there's, like, some amazing scientist or something, I don't know if amazing is the right word to describe a fascist, but, um, <laughs> yeah. but if there's, like, some very brilliant um, scientists or officials or former generals and stuff, rather than letting them get into the hands of this movement that's starting to grow, yeah. if they pull them into the Republic, into positions where they can actually aid the Republic gotcha. and will stop the growth of these movements and weaken them, allowing them to basically be destroyed. So it's interesting you say that because we're kind of seeing both of those things in mm. the Mandoverse in, in, in slight yeah. ways. So we've got on one hand the Shadow Collective, a small remnant of ex-Imperial officers trying to keep the Empire alive yeah. in secret, you know? Yeah. I forgot and they named it that. They did. They yeah. Called, yeah. So um, and, it's, and it's a cool idea. It yeah. makes sense. They want to stay and operate from the shadows and try and build power without yeah. getting noticed on the Outer Rim. Cool. Yeah. Mm. And then in the, the Core Worlds, you have Operation Paperclip, as we keep calling it, where we yeah. have like this, you know, scientist getting integrated with other officers into society, getting a job, living a normal life and using his skills to help build the New Republic instead of the Empire. Yeah. So we're seeing both of those things there. My point to follow on from this is that it seems like the New Republic is being written to be struggling to do this. They're mm -hmm. not very good. And I think a lot of people in the community have very mixed feelings about this. Yeah. And here's my big point. They're going out of their way to not bring in Han, Leia, Lando, and <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, and Luke. Yes. They, the only one we've seen is Luke. But the thing is, Han, Leia, and Lando are three generals. By the yep. time yeah. of the Return of the Jedi, they would have a huge part to play in keeping this, exactly, this yeah. new society uh, afloat, keeping yeah. it well-organized yeah. and structured. We are not seeing them because they can't show them because of actors and because of real world limitations yep. yeah. that is impacting the storytelling. Very much so. I agree. And we know at the very least of, of the of the big four we're talking about there, Leia was always involved. Yeah. Yes. Leia was always involved. Doesn't matter that, you know, she still had, you know, at this point, you know, Ben was a little little child. She was still involved, even if Lan uh, uh, Han didn't want to be, even if but Lando also had like, you know, adventures with Luke. Post Return mm. of the Jedi, they were still doing things. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like so people book. watching these shows and going, "Man, this New Republic seems really disorganized. They seem stupid." And it's because you know the core of that is that they can't show it being good without showing why. And the reason for why would be because those three characters are spearheading, like fighting for democracy and yep. to build this yeah. this new society. And then on top of that. They want space to explore stories outside of these characters. Yeah. They mm. want to be able to explore Mando. They want to be able to explore Ahsoka. And then further on from that, more shows, of course, and Skeleton Crew. They can't have those two things exist at the same time. No. If, the, if the galaxy is shown to be well-ordered, you can't have these adventures where they are fighting criminal remnants. Yeah, because, because they're the, like... The society would take care of that. Yeah. And you wouldn't be able to believe it. You wouldn't be able to suspend your disbelief. Yeah. So it has to be stupid. Yeah. And the There's is, my rant. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no I get you yeah. It's like, yeah, the, the, the Mando and Ahsoka being heroes outside of things is because they're like filling in the gaps. Yeah. But there were still gaps in the real world to fill in. There this was, is true. There plenty this of is gaps. very true. Yeah, um, like that's the thing. It's like, I feel like even if the New Republic was amazing, you know, there would still be problems arising. And yeah. a part of these stories that they're telling tertiary to it all yeah. is that's how they resolve a lot of these issues rising up. I, I do agree that the New Republic has to struggle. Um, like I am a true believer that we should see it decline. One thing I want people or at least fans to stray away from is or the writers especially, is to depict the New Republic as any worse than the Empire, because that happened in Legends a little bit. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, that's kind of screwed up as a message. Yeah. yeah. And it's also just, it doesn't feel in line with the rebellion from the original trilogy. Let's go, you know, like the, mm. the happy hunky dory where we leave off in Return of the Jedi. It's like, yeah, yeah. the rebellions now, they, they, you know, they got, they beat the Empire, cool. And we can, we can imagine that there would be a future where it's like, yep, they're good people running a good galaxy, right? We don't want this dodgy shit throughout mm. you know we don't want the wiping old mate scientist mine in mando uh with with some you know evil torture machine thing yeah. it's, mm. like, it's just not them here's here's one interesting thought for you guys so a lot of people on the internet complain like oh they're about the new republic is like stupid they're so mis disorganized and stuff it should be good luke leia lando and han worked so hard to make the new republic work and be good so it should be good 
But what does that look like to you, Star Wars fans? I asked this question to the camera and to the mic because, in my mind, if you're going to show a democracy, you're going to show it a society looking and acting well and everyone's taken care of, that's socialism, baby. That ain't capitalism. <laughs> that's socialism, you know what I mean? Uh, so that's kind of what it should look yeah. like if you're going to be presenting this perfect space utopia after yep. the, the New Republic falls. Oh, sorry, the, new, the yeah. Empire falls. Yeah, and then, you know, if we... if we, I'm my favourite. Let's do Socialist New Republic in our trilogy, right? Because, that's where I'm going. Yes, yeah, <laughs> because then we also do like a flat arc thing, right? So so we have, you know, our our, our villains challenge the idea of, of a socialist government, right? And, and as flat character arcs work, we show that it right, works. It works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you start with it working, you have it challenged, and you end with it working yeah. because it works. Yeah, mm. baby. That's it. Let's let's call it a wrap there. That's the episode. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. The New um, Republic. Sorry for anyone who's like bothered yeah. by listening to this. That's okay. I want my uh, anarcho capitalist. We didn't have any Republic. political disclaimers at the we start. Have, yeah, no, this yeah. is this is our slight political <laughs> tangent. You yeah. know, we are firm believers that socialist policy is good for the people, the proletariat, the working class. And that's who we Elements. want to support. And that's who yeah. we believe Han, yeah. Leia, Lando, and Luke would also yeah. be working to support as well. It doesn't discourage uh, competition. What it means is if you have a billion dollars, you should probably share that with people who are less fortunate. Mm. And guess what? If you have a billion dollars, you didn't fucking work for it because you literally, it's impossible. So fuck yep. you. Yep. <laughs> mm. yep. I think Lando would be a capitalist, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to um, uh, stand up for Lando here. Um, yeah, but he's kept in check yeah. by his friends. So Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Lando's an interesting case because he very much comes from private industry in the context of Star Wars. Mm, he yeah. runs Bespin and all that. And I think if we're getting into like the political world-building side of the sequels... When I, are we not, Cole? When are we not? Yeah, well, in that case... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that Lando would be involved a lot with the... Um, yeah, the private sector. The building of the economy yeah. and stuff. Yeah, well, and all that and we, say, we say he's a capitalist, but here's why he's also a socialist. He'd be for the unions. Yeah, like workers' rights. Yeah. That was something he was like really mm. fond of in uh, like Bespin. You even see that. He's yeah. like, I'm here because I want to take care of these people. These are good people. Yeah. I want them to have mm. these rights. And that's why he sides with the empire, even though it's, an, it's a misguided thing. You've, we've seen that so many times yeah. in history. People are like, you have power. We want freedom and we want to be able to work safely and in comfort. That's all we want. And we will side with the people who are promising that they'll give us that. Yeah, literally. Because obviously, um, they're not gonna, but no. that's the promise. Yes. Mm. Um, no, just a th thought, something worth making note of is that for our trilogy, yeah, we know he's a politician. What if, he, yeah, he's, he's in this like, you know, galactic labor union. Yeah. He's like their representative or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think something that's really great that you do see in Andor is that, oh, the empire controls everything. They're so good at the economy. Yeah. They're good at funneling economics into the core worlds. Yeah. Coruscant yeah, is yes. thriving. It's huge. Um, and even Cyril, who lives there with his mom, is living in a pretty like nice apartment that's like pretty spacious and stuff. Compare that with uh, Ferrix yeah. and the way that people live there on yeah. the outer, outer world and yeah. stuff. The it, is, it is night and day, and that's what yeah, that's what yeah. actual fascism does, no, yeah, which has been seen time and time again. They're good at economics in the same way that you know the Nazis were good at economics. Mm. Yeah. The same way that, that, they take know, all the money and the they West... put it in one place because no one can tell them not Yeah, the same way that the Western world is, is good at it today. It's yeah. just, um, you know, we've got industry at the expense of people, people. you know slavery mm. at the expense of the environment uh, just destroying the world so yeah sure it's good for the economy but at what cost and a bunch of countries like australia like the united states and like many countries in europe that are rich because they are making africa poor yeah <laughs> and making yeah, countries yeah, yeah. in asia poor because they are taking all of the labor and the money out of those countries and funneling it in in a very long and convoluted way yep. into the western countries yep. and that's mm. why we live the way we do right yes. now so Anyway, in order for, I think we're getting to the end of yeah, the rant now. Sorry, no, guys. But, but no, but this is important because it's like, in order for the new republic to be this good government that we want them to be, they're going to hit that galactic economy hard because they're going to have to change all of this. Yeah, they've got to start from mm, the no. ground up. You yeah, know? and it's like, okay, so let's say, let's take Kashyyyk, uh, Kashyyyk for an example. Let's say the entire um, planet of Kashyyyk is still enslaved for labor purposes. You stop that. Yeah. You stop that. But, but where what, does all the labor Yeah, go? yeah. But what were they working on? Yeah, then you look at what's essential. What were they working on? Okay, so it's the whole, you know, if same thing with, with uh, Corellia in, in Ahsoka. If they're working on military ships, stop work on military ships. You're now working on passenger ships. You're working on, you know, uh, resources and architecture, stuff that we need, not yeah. stuff for war. And bring back droids. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Bring back droids. Uh, I think something that we've, we stumbled upon uh, in one of the last episodes was the idea that, like, in the prequels, there are lots of droids and they're built for war. Mm. In the original trilogy, there are no droids used widespread and the droids we do see are discriminated against yep. because mm. of, assumedly, the Clone Wars and people's history with droids. Yeah. In the sequel trilogy, it'd be really cool to see a mix somewhere, yeah. like, halfway between yeah. where we're seeing droids integrated into human society in a lot more of, like, a widespread way. Yeah, and with more autonomy. I believe yeah, as well. and there'd be far fewer people who were discriminatory to them because yeah, you know they've died from the Clone Wars era. And they're more a part. Of, yeah, they're more like 
integrated into society. Yeah, I think also coming back to the idea of ideology uh, you know, of the new republic, I, I would like to see different factions in government. Okay. Because mm. I like that's one thing you know you often see in parties. Like even if you have a two party system, the major parties themselves will be divided with factions. Like yep. you yeah. see in the context of America, you know, you've obviously because of such a strict two party system, you get all these different caucuses in the Senate trying to push for a different ideology within the party. Um, and even here in Australia, you know, you got Labor left, Labor right, Labor center, and with Mon Mothma's government, I believe that Mon Mothma is shockingly centrist. I mean, that's kind of how she is. Um, I don't betrayed. know enough about her, like, in the EU. I've only yeah, seen yeah. her in Andor, basically. So I don't yeah. know, like, her policies and stuff. Yeah, but even in the way that the um, New Republic is executed in the shows, it has this very, like, moderate... We see her in episode three of Ahsoka. This is episode three. With yeah. The yeah. scene with yeah, her yeah, and Hera. Yeah. And yeah. she's literally in the center yeah. of these five characters. Yeah, yeah. And she's like... Yeah, my hands are tied. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Uh, and she's I, the I leader. You, but, yeah. Yeah. She's the leader of the Republic. Exactly, yeah. She does yeah. nothing because she has to appease. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, you're right, eh? Didn't yeah, realize she was. Exactly, yeah. And even like, she's kind of notorious for, in the context of the Rebel Alliance, being the moderate uh, peace one. This is yeah. true. Yeah. This is true. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I think part of that is the fact that when the New Republic forms and they choose her as a leader, she is a great leader for the birth. I Like, I liken mm. her to George Washington. Uh, okay, the yeah. fact that she's like kind of the first test for power. Yeah. And um, as much as we all have a lot to criticize Washington for, um, <laughs> one of the great things he did is the fact that he did stand down uh, as president and refused to run again, setting the precedent that there were term limits. Right. So yeah. that was um, after four or eight years of his presidency? Uh, I believe he ran, uh, he was two terms. So he did eight so years yeah. and then he. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, then he stood yeah. down. The t like the whole, like, the term limit came in after uh, FDR. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't an official thing, but he set basically the precedent. Like the it. unspoken, unwritten rule. Yeah, yeah that you yeah. don't run to the end of your life because you're not a dictator. Exactly, gotcha. yeah. And every and cool. the thing is, he had the ability to do it. He even had the option to basically start another monarchy. But um, he was like, nope, we fought for this, we're going to do this. Mm. And even though you all want me to keep running, I'm not going to. So on that point, I think, yeah, Mothma represents this very centrist view of the Rebel Alliance. But I think we should see different ideologies around her. So I think Leia should be like very leftist. Yeah. I think she should be pushing for aggressively like, progressive. Yeah, like welfare mm -hmm. state, all that, maybe even nationalization of industry. Probably even scaring some people to the point where they're like, that's kind of like the Empire. <laughs> yeah. But um I think we should also see like other viewpoints there as well. And I think a great place to draw inspiration from is all of the bickering amongst the founding fathers of the US. Okay. Like uh shout out Hamilton. No. Um <laughs> but I mean like not just Hamilton but um like HBO's John Adams. There's a lot of interesting stuff that happened between the founding fathers and just okay. that battle of ideology. What you're talking about though is right at the birth as you said yes. of the new republic. And when we're starting our sequel rewrite, that's going to be 20 years after. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, and this is going to be the first time I think we've maybe talked about this more. We've been kind of tinkering and throwing ideas at the wall for something I call the fall of Coruscant, which is mm. our version of the Clone Wars. You call it the fall of Coruscant? That's the what I call it in my head, yeah. the fall I, of Coruscant. I call it yeah. uh, Final Days. Final Days, yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, it's this idea that we have for like a Clone Wars style anthology show that we'll probably never make. But <laughs> when we have yeah. ideas that fit in this time period, that's yeah. where we put them. Yeah. yeah. And it is, like you said, the birth yeah. of the New Republic yeah. and yeah. the fall of the, the Empire. And we're going to, in our canon, it's very likely we're yeah. going to have Coruscant be a wasteland after the destruction of the entire planet. Yeah. That's why they moved to Hosnian Prime. And the idea is that it's very complex complex and very long so mm, something yeah. like saying hey we've got to redistribute all these resources so that it's more equal yeah. and spread throughout the galaxy is going to mm. make life immediately much worse yeah yep. long term much better yeah that's something i don't want to show in sequel no movie no i, I agree i agree i'm no, not no, coming no, i don't no. sorry I if i can't it. Kind of no no, no that's okay it just um, it fits better in a tv show yeah, yeah absolutely I, does. I agree yeah um the reason i bring up this early stuff though is yeah. because i feel like i guess to draw an example in current canon we have the whole centrist versus populist debate and i think you need this long-running ideological two-way split running 20 years up to the mm. events of the sequels. And that should define... Ooh, that should define... Fuck. <laughs> that should define the basically the philosophical conflict of the New Republic storyline. Okay, so you diving into that. We're very much in the part of the show where we talk about our fixes and our versions of stuff. Sorry, mm -hmm. I didn't like call that out. No, but that's okay. With that, in uh, the treatment I wrote, and Mello, you've now read it. I've got to get you to read it at some yeah. point. But yeah, yeah. You're a lot more busy. Uh, it's, it's all good. So basically Absolutely. the core conflict, I've switched it. Instead of it being centrist versus populist, mm -hmm. which if, listener, if you're curious, we've talked about it in other episodes, and it's, in, it's predominantly featured in the Bloodline book, which is an EU book. Mm. The, I changed the core conflict to be it's Jedi versus everyone else. Mm. So basically it's, you know, this group of people who are, you know, 
obviously ex-imperials or imperial yeah. loyalists in some way who are saying the Jedi Order, we can't trust them. We don't want them building. We don't want the Church of the Force here, which yep. is something that Leia does in the first movie treatment mm. that I wrote. She's like trying to build the Church of the Force so that people can worship them and bring it back into society yeah. again. And they're here about, oh, there's this wizard on the Outer Rim who's hiding away from all of us, training younglings <laughs> yep. to be like, yeah. what, like a militia? And yeah. they're like, no, it's a religion, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, wasn't Vader a Jedi? You know, so he had a lightsaber. Yeah, exactly. And then within this treatment, you get the scene with mm. Leia where they bring all of this evidence before and they say, yeah. hey, this is like, so you're actually Luke's brother, you're yeah. uh, Vader's daughter, you've been, you've sent your son to become a Jedi and they're all mm. training on the Outer Rim. Here's footage of someone with a lightsaber attacking people um, in the Outer Rim and stuff. Yeah. That doesn't seem like a peaceful religion to me. And yeah. all of this gets hit with her at once and she gets kicked out of the Senate. That's how the first yeah. treatment roughly goes for Leia. Yeah, I think that's a really cool conflict. Thanks, Cole. Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah. all good. Um, but that's the, that's the yeah, core yeah. conflict is Jedi yeah. versus everyone else. I, I do have one question, though. Go for um, it. Yes. It's bad. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. My question is, how, do, how does this affect like the everyday people? Uh, like, How would this split the whole galaxy? It's a good question. It's a good question. And I, in my head, it's, it works well because mm. it is a single feature film script. And yeah, like, yeah. This core conflict, which represents a lot of the characters who are involved in the story, as opposed to something that is a bit bigger and more politically focused, which is centrist yeah. versus populists, because that wasn't character focused. No. It yeah. wasn't tied to Luke, Leia, and all the people mm. in Outer Rim and Han and all that. Yep. It was only mm. tied to Leia and Hux. And this, yeah. Yeah. this was some, cause some of the problems I had previously writing my treatments is because I, I basically defined that even going with a two-party system that I'd have, there's like five different conflicts I want mm. to look at what to do with, you know, the Outer Rim, what to do with the Jedi, exactly. whether or not the uh, galaxy should remain, uh, like the, the New Republic should remain this one centralist thing, or if everyone should have the right to independently mm. govern. It was too much. And I think that to keep it to Star Wars and what matters to Star Wars, questioning the Jedi yeah. and their existence mm. and their place in the galaxy in this era, in this, you know, okay. The this Empire, are, core yeah, the Empire are gone, movies. but there's only like 20 Jedi now because they're being retrained. It's it's it, it just works. It works and it feels yeah. right. But yeah. I see exactly what you mean. I believe the place for a centrist versus populist debate is in the TV show. Yeah. And that's where we'll throw that idea. And that will be the background. Yeah. And I, I think what would be a smart decision is for that to have been resolved by the time mm. we get to Force Awakens. Yeah, yeah. So have that be the, the debate and that's like... Okay, so it's a bunch of stuff. It's them trying to build a new republic and to dismantle the systems put in place by the Empire. It's them trying to deal with the repercussions of working with Outer Rim crime factions yeah, yeah. and how that, the, the, yeah. the Cold War stuff. And then it's centrist versus populist as well. Yeah, yeah. And all of that can fit within a TV show yeah. that yeah. builds the backstory yeah. between episode six and seven. Now. There you go, listeners. But what's really fun, because I have read some of your treatment, Cole, I know <laughs> okay. how much, how passionate you are about yeah, all yeah. the backstory. The thing is, in, in terms of the writing perspective, I am too. In order to yeah. write seven... I need to know everything like a simple happened. conflict. Yeah. So what's a really fun project I think going forward is that, you know, when we're happy with things, when we want to lock things in, we do need to write these ideas down. We yeah, need to like we need in. to develop our so, timeline. Yeah. Twin six and seven. And yeah. so whilst we're talking about a show that we'll never make, yeah. <laughs> we can always have the bones there and that's something interesting. And there's something when we're happy we can lock it in release yeah. to the to the listeners. Yeah. yeah. Is like, you know, here's our idea for what we would do for that TV. Beyond that, yeah. and I don't usually uh, talk about this kind of stuff. Cole, do you want to jump in? Oh, yeah, I, do, I just want to say one thing, though. Um, I think, yes, you can have this complex political story and stuff and all that. I think there is a core, very simple conflict that everyone can understand, though. It's order versus freedom. Yeah. Right. And that's long running throughout Star Wars, right? Okay. It's this yeah. idea of do we cave into security and order against crime, against order. All of this order. order. Yeah, and it even comes through in this um like this conflict with the Jedi and all that. Um, versus the ideals of freedom that the Rebel Alliance fought for. And I fully agree that I don't think that sequels or even mainline films should be all about politics. And I mean, as much as we do defend the inclusion of politics in Star Wars, it is a problem in something like in the, the prequels. prequels. Absolutely right? yeah. it is. And I do want to uh, add my contention, though. I think politics can be incredibly character-driven. And one of the problems in Star Wars is just it never really is. And Watch something like House of Cards, see how character-driven <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But, like, um, in the context of Order vs. Chaos, you know, and this idea of the First Order versus this New Republic's liberal democracy, every character has a strong opinion on it. Mm -hmm. That's what they're fighting for, and you can build a very clear philosophical conflict through yeah. that. And also you create this great lesson for children and families, you know, about is the good thing always easy to do? I love that. That's a, th that's a theme I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Look, I think that's like, that's kind of why we have in, in one of our plot lines, Leia and Hux. Yeah. This, is, it is because, you know, it, yeah, in order to tell politics well, they have to be personified. Yeah. So it has to, if we are doing two parties or just, just two opinions on Jedi, on whatever, mm. it's Leia and Hux. It's Leia versus Hux. Yeah. 
Uh, and no, that was all. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Something interesting with the Leia yeah. Hux uh, dichotomy is my analogy brain is telling me Hux needs to be evil in the same cartoonish way that, for example, Ron DeSantis is evil. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm getting very political now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, um, but so he does like horrible, evil political stunts. And I, in my mind is like, that's a really great analogy for Hux. He yeah. would be a great foil for Leia. Yeah. But what's mm. more an interesting story that maybe doesn't reflect the world in our world as much is he is a good person. He has values and he values justice. He looks up to Leia. He aspires to be like her, but he doesn't trust the Jedi because he was raised not to. Yeah, well, what if I put it's a more interesting story. to you, it's like this, Bryce. What if it's just, Hux is a, he's a misinformed, misunderstanding person. That's very common. Yeah. Mm. You know, like the world, yeah, sure, is full of good and bad people, but it's full of good people who are just, who just don't get it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you, but it'd be it's interesting to think that someone listening to this would be like, that's you. You speaker, Carmelo, Bryce, and yeah. Cole, you don't get it. And that's okay. yeah. works and you're yeah. wrong. And that's yeah. fair. Look, it's all a matter of perspective. It is. I, I, I love a healthy debate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. I because like uh, I guess oh sorry if I interrupt you. Um, no, no. but my approach to like the philosophy of it is I think um there needs to be a lot of nuance and yeah. like one thing is I think Knowing that Star Wars are family films as well, I think children are often smarter than a lot of people give them credit for. Oh, absolutely. And as well as that, you know, I don't want to teach just a pure black and white morality. Yeah. I, I want. I do believe in the existence of evil, not as a force, but as an expression of people's beliefs and actions. Mm. And I think that Star Wars is a great tool to teach that evil can come in so many different shapes and sizes. Yep. And it's not always clear. And yeah. being good isn't always easy. No. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree with you. And I think that, you know, is a great thing to explore when mm. we're talking a lot about our themes, wanting it to be about balance. Yeah. And finding balance um, after so many years of fighting to just be happy and be comfortable mm. uh, in terms of like the Star Wars galaxy. Uh, gosh, gotten so heady with this one. Yeah. Um, bas uh, my thought earlier that I want to jump back to really quickly yeah. is that all of this discussion is to say, especially about the fall of Coruscant, as we've been talking about it, is... With the with the show that we're making and this platform that we we want to build, dear listener, join us. For I think there's a lot of potential there for if people have comments and ideas mm. for stories that fit within six and seven, because there's a 20, 25 year gap there. Let us know and work with us to build that story, because mm. I think that's a really unique potential that we have here um, with with this show. Is we want to rewrite the sequels, of course, but there's so much more potential beyond that for extra storytelling. Yeah, and if we have you know let's say you know ten thousand fans listening in every mm. week who want to comment in and be like, here's this idea for this one episode of this one show in this 10 year gap of the fall of Coruscant yeah. you know, or however long it is. Also, if yeah. you give us stuff and we use it, we'll credit you. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're progressive as hell. We believe in credit. We didn't <laughs> agree on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Credit as in we'll send you credits. Yeah. Republic credits will do fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's my, yeah. my small plug for like, yeah. you know, stay tuned to the show because this is the kind of stuff we want to do. We don't want to just sit and talk about it on a show. We actually want to write mm. it and build build writing and build stories. You know, mm. that's yeah, kind of yeah. what we're interested in doing here. So yeah. there's my small kind of weird plug. Sorry yeah. if we're meant to take this in a structured way, but going back to your... This is our least structured episode <laughs> yeah. of the show, so no. go but nuts. to take it back to your whole Jedi conflict as well. Yeah. It's very interesting because that's the um, secularism versus uh, religious... Yeah, yeah, separation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, argument. so for me, the what I realized after I wrote it, it reflected almost more of here's the right wing versus the queer community. Mm. Because I didn't ever write it into my my treatment that they that the Jedi are trying to integrate it all. They're just trying to rebuild their religion. Yeah, yeah. And they're just trying to do their own thing completely mm. separate to everyone else. Yeah, yeah. And this uh, political faction is targeting them as a yeah. scapegoat to yeah. take attention away from yeah. the outer crime, outer out world crime yeah. rings. And I was like, oh, that's the, that's happening today with minorities yes. and with queer people <laughs> because they're just you know, air quotes threatened. Yeah. by things they don't understand. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that, that's certainly interesting. So I, that's I that's like the parallel I, f I found there. The, the idea between secularism versus like yeah. integrating church and state or to keep them yeah, separate, yeah. that's something we've talked about but I haven't explored yeah. in writing. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious about the uh, the Church of the Force. Yeah, so yeah, yeah Leia has, in, in the treatment, she um, helped to build the Church of the Force yeah. and get the funding for it. To Which is built. a thing that exists in canon, you know, like yeah. uh, yeah. Chiridon Bays in yeah, Rogue One were that. a part of it. Um, yeah. Who dies at the... Law Santeca it was mm. part of it yeah. and his whole oh. community on, on, on uh, Jakku. Yeah. Oh, they all as well. They're I thought it was just oh, him. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So that's the old guy at the start of Force Awakens yeah. for anyone who doesn't just know who the Lord yeah, is. First Order got a got a double win uh, yeah. there. They mm -hmm. got to they got to put themselves on the paper trail. Yeah. And they got to kill a bunch of, you know, Jedi lovers. Yeah. Um, Wild. Because they love that shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is interesting. Because remember back to our was it our Jedi episode where it did this secularism thing came yeah. up. Because mm -hmm. it's like uh Oh yeah, it did. It's only yeah. kind of loosely ties to what we're talking about with the New Republic, but you know, like 
what I want ideally for this this trilogy is is not to go preaching a pro religious stance. I believe in the separation of religion and state, but I also believe in the freedom to peacefully practice religion and the power to, that it has to help people. Yeah, to yeah. yourself and not in a destructive way. But you know what I want to push as being important in in this, this trilogy is that that morals morals are the most important. Morals mm. are more important in a, in a more personal spiritual sense yeah uh than government you know Mm. like you know good good people change the world because good people create good policy right that changes the world yeah politics is the tool politics is the tool through which good people take action exactly help others yeah so i kind of want to put that into effect (laughs) yeah god knows how to do so uh yeah a question many of have asked yeah (laughs) Yeah. and fewer have answered yeah but that's why the jedi are so important because it's like so they represent at their core and they should represent good morals and that's our Mm. you know our our better new and evolved yeah. Jedi, or, or our, not even new, because it's like as we spoke the about old the Jedi, Jedi, the old, yeah. the real, the Jedi. compassionate Jedi. Yeah, they have yeah, good yeah. morals. Uh, and how do you push that to people without it being like, "Have you heard this good book? <laughs> have, have you heard well, the good news? You know, um, yeah." I I promise I'll link this back into the New Republic. But, <laughs> Go for it, um, I mean, I think the great thing there is the fact you know you have an example of the Jedi Order that did get involved in government, and that was the prequels. Yeah, and how badly that went. Yeah, so I think you have a lot. Church and state were connected in the prequels. And it caused so many issues. And it's why people did not like the Jedi, because they were interfering. And as well as that, you know, they gatekept a lot of information. And one of the things I think Luke's Jedi Order should be like is, and this may even come into the Church of the Force and all that, but I think Luke should take on a sort of, I guess, philosophy where he's spreading knowledge to everyone in the universe. Mm. So he distills the Jedi code into simple tenets that anyone can abide by. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of like, um, I guess... I'll always draw this bloody comparison, but like Buddha, right? Went around mm. teaching everyday people eight simple steps to living a good life, the uh, Eightfold Path and all that. And I think if Luke does something similar like that, it's the biggest comparison or contrast between his order and the old one. And that could also bring a lot of contention to the conflict with the government as well, because if all of a sudden you have this grassroots spiritual movement going around telling people that they can just be compassionate to one another and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. or be charitable then that could cause tension. Yeah, and yeah. if, you know, like, if it were to go back to the old days of, of I'm given to understand how the Jedi were, it's there, the, they're nomadic, and, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll just wander from place to place on a planet or wander from planet to planet, yeah. and they'll be, you know, helping people as they go, you know, and it's not it's mm. not helping people against this, you know, these pirates have come and attacked this village. It's, you know, we've just been hit by a natural disaster. You know, let me yeah, and we're here yeah. for support and defense. And, and, yeah. yeah, and we look up to this, this person, we idolize this person, it's like, you know, this little kid in the street, please, how can I be like you? Be a good person. It is yeah, good yeah. thing. It is following in the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's and that? Being, you want you want a thousand yeah. loaves and fishes, <laughs> and being charitable, and being kind, and taking care of exactly. treating the poorest as you would treat the richest. Yeah, all that yeah. kind of like biblical it's, stuff. Yeah, it's that compassion coming back to the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and returning. There. So you see, yeah. like Luke just going around and helping people and being nice. And does that include defense and using a lightsaber in the cases of protecting someone from a monster or from yeah. a gang? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sometimes it does. Yeah. But yeah. that's not the point. The point is mm. not to be aggressive it is to be yeah. offensive and yeah. to help and it's about bettering everyone yeah, yeah. which is Even what religion should be and here's here's a really interesting question mm. how i believe it shouldn't be evangelical there should be no one going out and preaching the tenets of the the, the force it's like hey do you need help cool i'm gonna yeah, help yeah. you mm. i'm a member of the church of the force yeah yeah, yeah. yeah if you're it's... interested come and learn more yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah. yeah if someone asks it, then yeah, you yeah, tell exactly. but if no one asks you go on your merry yeah, way. Exactly. You don't give unprompted wisdom. Uh, you you just show your wisdom. Yeah, because what's worse than getting wisdom from someone who you don't want to hear it <laughs> yeah. from? It's yeah, the yeah. worst thing ever. <laughs> but yeah, can you imagine that's... if someone came door knocking right now while we were doing we'll this? We'll get them on the podcast. I'd start believing in God again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, uh, strike me down right here right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, man, we've covered a lot yeah. just from like yeah. economics to politics yeah. to it's religion now. Public. What oh, time are we at now? Because I do have something I want to like. We've got plenty of time. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so let's go back to the New Republic for a second. Okay, go for it. Yes. I just want to talk about, like, let's talk about the Senate while we have a chance. Because mm. okay. you and I have different ideas on how it should work. Skype yeah. rooms, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, go to yours first. Okay, so, Cole, in the in the first draft treatment I've written, yeah. uh, basically the, the Republic Senate room is just a collection of small rooms, each fitting about 15 people mm. or so. And each room is dedicated to one party, which are small... Yeah. collections of 15 people with like specific delete specific beliefs yeah the one that layers in i think is something like the veterans party like the republic Ve- mm. um, the rebellion veterans party or something and it's a yeah. collection of her mon mothma admiral akbar yeah uh, tarful the wookie 
and like some old faces and uh, if he survives and yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and Lando as well is in there and so they have their beliefs and their interests and then there's also the uh, religious oversight committee which is Hux's mm. political affiliation yeah. and the way they interface with each other is they're two rooms completely separate mm. there is a speaker droid in each room potentially collect- connected by a hive mind that was your suggestion Mello and they Skype each other <laughs> in the Senate building yeah and that's it and because it makes yeah. sense it's different to the old Republic. Yeah, uh, and the way they had this massive one big room where it felt like yeah. no one was really being heard. Um, the speaker droids moderate the proceedings, which is integrating droids and something that we want to do in the sequels. And the Skype technology just feels like something they should have in the future, yeah. you know, in like yeah, a, cool. a galaxy far, far away. So yeah, no, I like that you're weaving the technology side of it. Yeah, there's that. my pitch that's, for yeah. the internet and for you. Cole. Yeah, yeah, because I um initially I remember like it was you who came up with the speaker droid, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can go into that for a second. Yeah, yeah. The audience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in one of my it. treatments a while back, I loved this because I had it like mm. the day before, and I was just like, "Oh, that's so much fun." And this idea that yes, so there is a there's a speaker of the house, same as there are in 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 many um actual real uh, world parliaments, and like stuff. yeah, parliaments, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a it's this this really just like gilded sort of droid and it's beautiful it's gorgeous and it maybe would the design would be based off some sort of like ancient race of wise beings in the star wars universe like the zepho sorry yeah and they're on maybe yeah but they are unable it's unable to be you know hacked into or corrupted because it every single day it is checked by like lobots yeah you know, like lobot from uh empire he's got the, the built-in stuff you know yeah there's just so many security measures in, in place but yes this is the moderator and so it, it you know determines who speaks yeah. At any point in a very fair and very like unbiased way and had this great idea that C-3PO is in love with it. That's so funny. Loves it so much. Also, I don't know if I've ever brought this up. C-3PO, I had the idea of kind of being a Sember okay. to represent the Ewoks. That's so whack. <laughs> yeah. I had that's that for the ages. That's I the most Clone it. Wars that's shit so I've ever George heard. Yeah. Lucas. Yeah. That's very George yeah. Lucas. Yeah. I mean, th- he is their god. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. Separate church and state. That's yeah. very funny. Yeah. So the one minor difference between, I think, is like, instead of one, it's many speaker droids all connected yes. in each party yeah. room. Um, And my big distinction is I don't want to have the big room from the Old Republic. It can't yeah. just be one room. It yeah. has to be yeah. separate rooms for me. I... Oh yeah, sorry. You have your version. Yeah, so of the my, my one group. was okay. instead of it being because the old one was based around sort of it was kind of like classes. That's why you know had you had these layers yeah. and stuff. Exactly, it wasn't yeah. fair. Mine was just this bloody like big stadium size big circle. So think yeah. about like you know when the UN meets, it's a big circle. Yeah, it's a big big room, and everyone's like on an equal level, just in yeah. the circle. Same deal, but it's just massive. It's a, and it has to be it seats ten thousand yeah, senators. But everyone has to be project because they're all on the same level everyone's equal but it, everyone gets projected when they're speaking because yeah. the moderator the droid this decides they get projected so that they're able to be seen and heard so yeah, yeah similar kind of thoughts yeah. we want to you know have a visual representation of equality and fairness mm. and like the equal distribution of ideas and stuff but yeah cool see i i'm a big believer that we should have a like a senate room and i want to see them divided into their parties right so you actually mm-hmm. get a visual representation and the one thing that I really care about with politics um, that I feel like this it's such a missed opportunity is the fact we don't actually ever get real debates like yeah. in there because mm. have you seen like I'm, you guys have seen like when politicians just go at each other oh, yeah. like, <laughs> insulting yeah, yeah, yeah. and mocking them yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. trying to belittle their reputation that's the sort of stuff that makes politics interesting yeah, right. right? and that's the stuff you want to see in a political subplot right yeah. you want to see Hux try to Get under layer skin. Exactly, yeah, you right. You see Lando put down some people because yeah, exactly. he's suave. He's got yeah, charisma. You want to see that. And it's a great way to show why Leia is a good leader and why she's a great politician. Because mm. I, I I envision her being a fantastic debater. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. when she steps up to a podium, let's yeah. say, or you know, when she gets projected, she controls the room. Yeah. And yeah. You, and you, you know, and, and then just like in a cinematic sense, you, you change your music, your sound, everything. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. And I agree entirely. Debate, I think, is like a really yeah. good way to uh, and, to bring the action to those yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah, to bring in actual conflict, actual storytelling, mm. and to really show character. And I think that's the one thing that I mean, Andor kind of does it as well. Although, unfortunately, with the Senate, it's very it's much still in interesting. It's not debate, but it, yeah. it's very it's a deep character demonstration yeah. of who Mon Mothma is and how other exactly, people perceive yeah. her. It's still really well done, yeah, but it's yeah. not a debate. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's not the same thing because the Senate's in disarray there. And yeah. it's just not active. It's yeah, it's barely but, functional. Yeah, exactly right. But I really want to see those scenes where like a, a civilized debate just escalates into mm. name calling and yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. But and that, drama. Yeah, I mean like, but the, there there's a bit of an issue there with like sort of my droid moderator thing. Yeah, they would step in. It would be yeah the solution to the old problem that they had in the other republic where it's just like 
Anyone comes swinging in on their pot and I object. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't attack Naboo. Fucking yes, you did. <laughs> you literally did. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I do. Um, my question, though, about the speaker droid is I'm so curious to see how that got put in place. And I imagine that at the end of the day, no one would really like it just because it would constantly be neutral and yeah. stopping them. No, well, I mean, hey, yeah. that's it, though. You know, because yeah. there is no grand chancellor. Uh, even in Bloodline, they're, they're thinking of bringing back in a grand chancellor. Mm. It's like, I think they call it like the first senator. That's yeah. what part of the, the, something I've never really spoken about is in there. Leia was a contender for first senator and, mm. and that's when they went after her and they found out all that shit about it. It's a really missed opportunity to not engage with the idea that droids are the only things capable of impartiality in the Star Wars galaxy. Yeah. Humans yeah. aren't, and, and sentient creatures just aren't, just because yeah. of the way their brains are wired. Yeah. But droids can be, you know? Yeah. yeah. And okay. I think, you know, following that story path is The question is, how many impartial droids have we seen in Star Wars? C three PO is pretty. Well, that's neutral. the thing though, because they're all programmed mm, to yeah, have yeah. personalities, so that the, yeah. you know people understand them, and get along with them more. That's the, and that's also why, I like you know, you don't want to make a character out yeah. of whoever this impartial person is meant to be. Yeah, humans can't relate to someone who is impartial. Mm. It's, oh no! It's, in, it's inhuman. He yeah. has to be cool as ice. Like yeah, the the speaker yeah. droid has to have a personality, so that people will even like subconsciously respect him. So that gives us a really great yeah. opportunity to have like a really cool character for the speaker. Yeah. Mm. But he is neutral. I can imagine just this this moment where it's like you know someone is about to interject, and the droid just like turns head, looks at it, gives it a glare. He's got to have sass. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, you're like and like Reaction, that's it. Yeah. Doesn't even have to press a button. Just looks at that senator. That in the up. same way that, you know, like Judge Judy has been <laughs> yeah. famous for like decades now. Oh my God. Okay. There's the, there's the, there's the head mm. cannon, the casting of this character. This voiced, Judge by, Judy. voiced by Judge Judy. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh man. That'd be really fun. Yeah. yeah. So it, it has to be someone like Judge Judy who yeah. is charismatic, yep. but still tries their best to be fair and yeah. impartial. Mm. Anyway. So that's uh, that's some notes there. Cole, you got any more questions yeah. or notes to throw in? Yeah, I, I, I like a lot of the ideas. And I, I was going to say about the speaker droid, it's like initially I was skeptical when I read speaker droid, but then I started thinking about it and I'm like, oh my God, I wish we had that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, wouldn't it be fantastic if in real life there was it, like, we just had an I, have a, figure. I have a codex of the entire law yeah, <laughs> start the, to finish yeah. and I can yeah. I can be yeah. judicial about yeah. dealing out Yeah, because here's the thing. Do you know that like in Australian politics, the speaker of the house is yeah. actually part of a party? Yeah, they're elected by yeah. the same, parliament. Same way yeah. in the US, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's weird, man. Yeah. yeah, at the moment, it seems like we have a pretty good speaker. Yeah, because the speaker's from Labour. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, there have been notoriously bad speakers on both parties. There have been. It's but no. It's interesting to see a speaker actually does that job. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah. I digress. Australian politics boring. Yeah, blah blah blah. And I'm sure people who know more about politics than I do. I yell don't know, at you guys. Right. Yeah. Yell at me. I don't know For what me. I'm talking about. But there's probably a reason that the speakers are elected from either house. But uh, I get we don't have droids yet. And yeah. if we did, maybe that would be a yeah, speaker. Yeah, be yeah. A good option. You know? It's because you need people with actual experience of parliamentary. Yeah. Um. Maneuver. Not maneuvers. Yeah. Parliamentary maneuvers. Uh, just the processes yep. so that they actually yeah. know the rules. Things you can program in. Yeah. Yeah yeah. 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 But yeah, I think a speaker would be interesting. And at the end of the day, yeah, I just really want to hammer home the point of dramatic tension and conflict in these scenes to drive forward. Yes. Plot. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. You yeah. can't have scenes where it is like so dry and stale that we see in Phantom Menace, where yeah. it is like, I'm a senator from Naboo. Yeah. I'm the queen of Naboo. I need to have these things stopped. And it's like, I object. Yeah. And it's boring as fucking yeah. watching paint dry. Yeah. You know? but, also but if then, it's personal. Yeah. 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 Politics and, is personal. And let's just up the acting in the direction as well. Because yeah. that was a big problem. And have it be yeah. like a focus on debate. And have yeah. it be really good cutting yeah. debate. You know? Yeah. Because like, yes, it's a political debate. But the subtext is the characters hate each other. You know? yeah. So. Yeah. That's a pretty good coverage. Do you have any other notes? I've got one final note we can talk about. Mm. It goes back to Ahsoka and Mando. I did have one, actually, right? So, when the Americans uh, occupied Japan and occupied uh, Germany and, like, the West occupied Western Ger Germany, certain industries flourished when they did that. Okay. Because, like, they're like, you know, okay, one of the, th one of the problems with Germany after World War I was that all of the war reparations and all of the taxes and all of the like the punishment that everyone had put on them for you know you know quote instigating World War One left their economy fucked yeah and that therefore was part one of the things that led to the rise of Nazism they learned from those mistakes they weren't going to let that happen again and they continued to let the and and harbor the the car industry that was flourishing in Germany and yeah. then they basically did the same then in Japan allowed industries to flourish manufacturing to flourish to bolster those economies to the point where germany and japan are now some of the most advanced nations in the world just an interesting thing to look at potentially with former imperial planets okay that the new republic could do so 
Yeah, so the only former Imperial, sorry, former Imperial planet that we know of is Coruscant. Yeah. Or I guess Corellia, yeah. if you want to consider Corellia. It's a manufacturing it's the, planet. It's the industry and manufacturing planet. So it just could, I mean, it could be right. really interesting to look at a form, another former Imperial planet in yeah. this uh, that is now much, much better off because of the New Republic. Mm. And they're like yeah. a leading power that yeah. is like taking charge in, yeah, in yeah. this political arena. Could be interesting if it's like one of the major manufacturing planets like Kuwait or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Kuwait planet of Kuwait. Kuwait. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no, you know that, right? What? Kuwait is a is a planet in Star Wars. Oh, I thought I, I know Kuwait's a real place in yeah. the real world. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I mean pronunciation might be a oh bit confusing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was, it was like the the Kuwait drive yards. I think in old canon mm -hmm. were where uh, most of the Star and Destroyers were manufactured. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's like there a, you go. Like a shipbuilding planet. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Huge. They had a they had a hyper ring mm. around the planet. Yeah, where the Star Destroyers were constructed in space. So yeah. then when it was completed, it then launches out from that. Yeah, very yeah. cool. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but um, we will bring in the of, country, the real country. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Planet Kuwait. So, um, speaking of massive hyper rings, yeah. Again, so yeah, episode yeah, three yeah. spoilers. Um, we are almost definitely not going to be including Mandalorian and Ahsoka, the TV shows and those that Mandoverse in nah, our nah, canon nah. because it just doesn't fit. Nah. And the whole point of what they're trying to do and what it seems to be yep. is they're bridging the gap and making Snoke and Palpatine clones work, making the New Republic setting up to be destroyed, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and I don't. We don't want to include any of that. No, we're actually quite limited now with how things have gone to what we can include. We can't even do Rebels. I don't think. I think we're the show. Yeah, we've right got on. the f six episodes, probably Clone Wars and or in Rogue One. Yeah, is about all we can do. Yeah, anything uh, pre a Return of the Jedi and it's excluding Rebels because yeah. Rebels ties into like the World Between Worlds and, and Ahsoka and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, mm. that's pretty much it. I think yeah. what we can leave yeah. in canon. But that the question remains: Can we bring Ahsoka in to the fall no. of Coruscant? I think. Her story has to <laughs> finish off screen in our universe, yeah, unfortunately. I, okay. yep. I'm of the strong opinion that Ahsoka just should not be past uh, even the original trilogy. Okay. Why yeah. is that? I just think having too many Jedi besides Luke kind of creates too many questions. So yep. this is something I've seen a lot is just the idea of like, if so many people survive the purge and order 66, mm. it takes away from the gravitas of that moment and that scene, you know? Yeah. Well, it's just, it's the, it's the fact that like Obi-Wan and Yoda we had everything riding on Luke or Leia, you know? And yeah. if there are more people than who were already trained Jedi, you know, why didn't they? Yeah. Why didn't they help more? Yeah. And yeah. It, you can try and bring the chosen one shit into it, but no, fuck off. Uh, it doesn't matter. Jedi are Jedi. Jedi mm -hmm. can be helpful when they're all together. So. Yeah. And they would be. Yeah. If they were there, they would. Yeah. I think something interesting that I've had pointed out to me is just like reading through Reddit and stuff, the more hopeful people that I like to listen mm. to. I really love the inclusion of Balin Skull, who seems to be, oh, and this is the, the mm. character from Ahsoka, who seems to be an ex-Jedi who has since turned mercenary. Yes. Yeah. Has embraced some of the dark side. He's not a full Sith by any means. Yep. But he believes in power and self-preservation and survival, yep. which is something that is explored in the, the Jedi Survivor game and the Jedi Fallen Order game as well. I yeah. really love this kind of he, these ideas. He would have become that way over his lifetime after the surviving purge. the purge yeah. and seeing these, these the atrocities of war and what the Empire did mm. to the galaxy. Yep. And he would have that he's jaded and yeah. is just trying yeah. to survive in a brutal galaxy. It's fair enough. I love this character, and I also love the idea that almost all of the Jedi Masters were wiped out, and the Jedi Grandmasters mm. were wiped out and stuff because it was just Yoda was the yeah. Grandmaster. Yep. Is that he was the only Grandmaster? Yeah. Okay, and then yeah. there was the Jedi Masters in the Council. They were all wiped out during the Purge, except for Obi Wan and Yoda, and I think one other who's in a comic. Quinlan Vos. Is he a Jedi Master? Uh, yeah, Quinlan's a. Is he a Knight or a Master? Uh, I think he's a Knight. I, shit. There's another yeah, guy. Sandra not. mentioned on another episode. There was like one guy in one comic who's still alive, but yeah. Um. Oh, actually, so no. Many. Um. In that case, um, the librarian. Oh, the like yeah, also survived, and then, then Vader caught up to him. My point, she talking about the librarian, is the Jedi who might still have survived are more archivist Jedi, yeah. researcher, yeah. scientist oh, Jedi, yeah, peaceful, yeah, right, religious right, right. Jedi. This is very interesting. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Agricorps. No. But, okay, so basically, if you are a Jedi youngling, right, and you end up being shit, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, they yeah. sort you, like, eventually it gets to the point where they sort you into where you sit in the order. Yeah. And Jedi younglings who are shit at their job, but still force sensitive, and they've kind of been separated from society. Yeah. yeah. They are put into the Agricorps, yeah. which is basically the, ag like, Jedi who are sent to the outskirts to work in agriculture. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, to me, I think, honestly, the majority of Jedi who would have survived Order 66 shouldn't be these amazing, like, high-ranking ones. It should be the people who are kind of shit. Yes. Mm. And who were clearly already far removed from everything anyway. Yeah. It's characters yeah. like that who I could see, you know, making yeah. a return, yeah. um, but 
characters who are very proficient fighters, who are targets, enemies of interest for the Empire, yeah. find it very hard for them yeah. to survive. Yeah, no, exactly. Through. And I reckon there would have been a storyline in our universe where, yeah, Vader does eventually catch up to Ahsoka. Where Ahsoka is still instrumental in helping form the Rebellion, like she's yeah. in yeah. Rebels, but can't keep it up forever. Um, it, yeah. If yeah, if, if you if you don't get picked up as a Padawan by a by a Jedi, that's ha- that happens to you. Sent off to the farm, or, or you can be like I think there's like Jedi pilots. There's a few other yeah, ones. It's pretty wild. brutal because yeah. they, you know they take you from your family, they kidnap you, and then you don't even get and then that you get full a shit kicker job. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. But Sorry, you I've never heard of this before. But then yeah. you still kind of do live that more Buddhist monk life. Yeah, yeah honestly, so. they're probably in my opinion more Jedi than the Jedi at yeah. that point in time. Yeah, they probably have more inner peace. Probably yeah. happier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'd be chill with just like the ability to, to float a yeah. cup and just chilling on a farm for the, my life yeah. in space. Yeah. That's I mean, rad. That's it's not, not like that. it would be rough farming if you still have the force. Exactly. Then, it'd be pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, let's, chill. let's, I'd, I'd pick a planet that isn't like Australia. <laughs> You're not out in Australia 40 planet. degree heat. Don't, you know? pick, don't pick Tatooine, you know? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what to farm moisture? Water? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, I think we've got everything. Yeah. That's that's all my notes. Yeah, any, yeah. any final points from anyone? No, I uh, interrupted Cole a bunch, like uh, just now. I'm no, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I I was trying to think of what I was gonna say. Um, this is more of just like a thing I've thought about for a while. Um, I think Massa Mater is a very interesting yeah. minor character. You know what? I couldn't tell after the 20 times I saw the words Massa Mater in your I fucking know. document. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I don't even really care about the guy, <laughs> but. I think it's Order. so. Like, listen, he has been there since the prequels. Yeah, he was Palpatine's right hand man. Mm. He negotiated the surrender of Coruscant, and then all of a sudden, in canon, he's just kind of swept aside and dies sadly. What? He, like, the reason he survived in politics is because he is this slimy parasite yeah. who mm. knows how to weave his way through. And I think if there is one person who should encapsulate the entirety of what the Empire's legacy is, I think it should be Massimator. Damn. Yeah. And Yeah, I fuck with that. Yeah, and having him involved in politics, I think that's a way to tie both the prequels, the original trilogy, and the sequels together. Um, yeah, no, I like off. that. Kill him off at some point. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. definitely see him being maybe potentially involved in the religious yeah. oversight yeah. committee. And he's yeah, bringing, yeah. he brings credence to that idea because yeah. he's like, yeah, I've been here the whole time. I'm ancient now and I'm yeah, very yeah. rich, but I've seen what the Jedi are capable yeah. of and they are evil and they should be put to, yeah, like, yeah. they should be done so, away with. I'm not going to lie. I reckon like once the Galactic Concordance in our version is signed, right, yeah. he is then imprisoned, but someone who's a bit more like rash and angsty in, in the New Republic would have sent a bounty hunter after him to, or an assassin mm, to have him ah, killed uh, yeah. like in prison or something. Interesting. Very See, interesting. Here, here's my proposal for Massimato, right? I think that he negotiated the surrender of Coruscant, right? And I believe they even do this in canon or legends. He posits that he was kind of unaware of what Palpatine was doing. It like so sleazy and shit like that. But in the context of these early years and how he gets to where he is in the sequels, He's involved in a lot of the process of transitioning the Empire into the New Republic. Because yeah. he's the only one who kind of has that top-down control of Apart the Empire. from Thrawn, who's out doing Exactly, you know? yeah, yeah. Who is clearly still aligned with the Empire. But Thrawn's an officer yeah. and a military leader, whereas Mass Amida is yeah. a politician. He's, he's a, a slimy bureaucrat. politician yeah. who like knows how to protect himself. And I think he should be crucial in a few very important decisions that like Mon Mothma makes and stuff yeah. and becomes a part of the plan. And by transitioning the Empire into the New Republic he kind of cements himself as this important figure who they kind of initially keep out of necessity. Mm, yeah. But then he plays neutral for a while, you know? Cause I guess he would be a fantastic symbol to point to, to say, hey, the Empire can be a part. Like, yeah, the yeah. old the Empire, Empire, the remnants, can be, a part. can be a part of the New Republic. Look you at Mass You can be like Mass Armada. Exactly. Follow yeah. his example. Exactly. And well, yeah. Mass Armada could be really cool to see. Yeah, and that and would have been his idea, too. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> he would have totally yeah, yeah. thought of that. Yeah, but he makes it seem like it's other people's idea, right? Exactly. And because of that, you know, he stands as a symbol of, yes, the Empire, like, it's also like thematic because the empire ends up being shit. Yeah. But he's symbolic because firstly, he anyone who is an empire sympathizer in the civilians, they're like, oh, well, they didn't execute Massimata, that guy. Um, so I like the New Republic now. And then over time, you know, Massimata starts to pull strings a bit more, hmm. starts to get it's a like, bit more radical. This 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 imperial officer went missing. To me, it seems like helped him escape out to Wild. It yeah. seems like he he might not even be pulling strings. He just sees the wind changing. He yes. hears about the first exactly, order. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's it's this time now. I'm gonna switch yeah, to yeah. these guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that I think that the reason Hux becomes radicalized is because Massimata should mentor him as a political tutor. Yeah. I dig, I dig that a lot. Yeah, um, kind of reminds me of um, Lord yeah. Peter Baelish from Yeah, in a way, because he is sleazy like that. Yeah, He's chaos so is a ladder. We're going to have him. Can we have him have as, as like, 
satisfying of a death as Peter Bailey. Oh God! Yes. In he Star Wars, should, I don't know. He should, well, yeah, yeah, well, he should die. He yeah. should die. He should totally the consequences die. of his actions. Yeah, that's yeah. it. We we we're just like nah, yeah. fuck it. We 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 everything else in Episode Nine is tame, but we have one scene that gives us an R eighteen rating. <laughs> oh my God! And it's his death. Master Maid vs. the Mountain. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Well, you've convinced me on Master yeah. Maid. Yes. That was a very good yeah. pitch. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Okay. And I think a great way to close out the show. This has been our very long and very. Uh, very wide discussion on a bunch of stuff economics was, politics yeah. uh, religion and uh, all sorts of stuff in between can you tell I like blue people in Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah so this has been this episode thank you so much for listening we're here every week talking about Star Wars stuff we're also here every week talking about Ahsoka we're also on TikTok YouTube Shorts Instagram Reels and anywhere oh, and Instagram as well anywhere you can find us online pretty much check us out everywhere go listen go give us five stars all that good stuff but until next time may the force be with you